it's all right, I'm just going to stop. Just, just when you end it. Don't look away, yeah, that yeah. is not going anywhere. Just another day at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Kind. No. Most important thing is, is what I've learned from the HLA and, and adap adapting it and, and, and moving forward and making sure, you know, I, I make use of it. The reason why I. I don't know what to say. <laughs> if I make a mistake, can I just, like, take a pause and then start again? Yeah, I'm ready. So, don't record this. <laughs> um, I've really enjoyed it. I've learned so much and I've, I've really benefited from Oh God, what have I benefited from? Oh. Oh. Okay. It's that it's been a fantastic... Uh, oh no, I've lost it. Can you give me a countdown? I don't know how much to gesticulate. Do you know? oh, how much? It's quite a mellow person. Yeah. I'm ready. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'll like chop and add some things. We're looking forward to seeing you. Bye bye. <laughs>
the reason why I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> if I make a mistake, can I just like take a pause and then start again? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, yeah, what's that? Don't record this. <laughs> Um, I've really enjoyed it, I've learned so much and I've, I've really benefited from, oh god, what have I benefited from? Oh, oh. Okay. Is that it's been a fantastic, uh, oh no, I've lost it. Can you give me a countdown? I don't know how much to gesticulate. Oh, how much? It's quite a mellow person, really. I'm ready. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> okay, I think I'll like chop and add some things. We're looking forward to seeing you. Bye bye. <laughs>
is that it's been a fantastic, uh, oh no, I've lost it. Can you give me a countdown? I don't know how much to gesticulate. Do you know? oh, how much? It's quite a mellow person. Really. Yeah. I'm ready. Thank you. Okay, I think I'll like chop and add some things. We're looking forward to seeing you. Bye bye. <laughs>Hello, welcome to HLA Live. HLA Live is our regular broadcast on the HLA YouTube channel as well as all the other social media channels. Each week we talk to interesting people from across the HLA community. Good evening everyone, I am really excited to be chairing tonight's meeting. Hi, I'm Rosie Spooner and I'm hosting HLA Live this Wednesday. And I'm an HLA scholar and I'm also going to be your host this evening to share with us their ideas and their innovations and hopefully bring them to a global audience. Quite quick, we have ideas, let's do this, let's do that, so... Many of the topics come from our community, with scholars and faculty expressing an interest in many of the discussions that we're about to have. Hello everyone and welcome to the HLA live session on widening participation in the postgraduate realm. Homelessness and health. Addiction and the new normal. HLA programmes are built on six pillars. The leader is an innovator and entrepreneur. The leader is a communicator. The leader is a manager. The leader as a negotiator. The leader is a follower and the leader is a philosopher. If you are interested in becoming a HLA scholar, why not get in contact? Many of the episodes in HLA Live will cover one or more of these important pillars. The HLA team consists of Pedra, Eamon, Tim, Riddy, Alistair, Adil and Trisha and a range of other HLA scholars and faculty. Hello, Johan. Thank you so much for joining me at this HLA Live episode. And I'm really excited to talk to you about our HLA ideas on which we work together. Um, I am not sure whether many people watching and listening to us um, to, tonight are familiar with HLA ideas. So maybe let's start off with like a two sentence summary of what the program is actually about. Sure, HLA ideas is essentially a program to support, um, it, well, we originally designed it as a program to support scholars after their scholars program. We noticed that a lot of scholars were really interested in creating long-term projects that were essentially not for profit or were never really, um, sustainable businesses um, and they wanted to create something that was a not-for-profit uh, impact organization um, to take their ideas forward and the reality is from starting the HLA we realized that um, there isn't very much support actually for not-for-profit um, social impact kind of organizations at the same time I started the HLA I also was uh, started Medics Academy and was running Medics Academy and I realized actually there's loads of support if you want to start a tech startup or, a, or any sort of commercial company but for not-for-profits and for social enterprises particularly in healthcare there really isn't very much um, there to help and so our scholars were finding that after they finished their one year with us on the scholars program um, there wasn't very much else um, uh, wasn't somewhere for them to go with their with whatever they were doing if it was that kind of project and so that's where we started HLA Ideas. Um, now it's obviously expanded out and other people outside of our scholars can apply if they have an appropriate initiative, that's what we call them, um, which is an organisation, they want to start something that is a not-for-profit or social enterprise that is going to genuinely have an impact and they want to create a sustainable not-for-profit or social enterprise or, um, or charity um, to kind of take their idea forward. And so HLA Ideas is a two-year programme and, and that's the other thing with for-profit organisations, usually incubators, accelerators, they're quite short, sharp 
programs they tend to be because it's all about becoming self-sustaining from um, revenue and or, or from raising money in the in the capital markets or whatever um, but with a not-for-profit social enterprise or a charity it's a much long slower drawn-out process to try and get to sustainability and so um, that's what HLA ideas is there it's a two-year program to really support them to uh, provide them that safety net of like kind of having a network to get their ideas forward. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for this. And um, you know, you've already touched on this, but could you elaborate a little bit more how HLA Ideas is providing this targeted support for medics and medical students that come with their organization ideas within healthcare? How, how organizations within healthcare are different to other organizations and why HLA Ideas is so needed? Sure. So um, the so health uh, HL ideas is aimed at all healthcare professionals, whether they're um, whether from a medical or from a nursing or allied health professional background. And what we saw was that there are lots of healthcare generally attracts a, a, a type of person that is often trying to do something uh, for impact. They want to make a real difference. Um, sometimes healthcare or a lot of healthcare professionals are not really interested in creating. Uh, commercial organizations then that, that's not their focus at all and so um, but the problem is that they because they're also not na necessarily used to working in commercial organizations they they creating sustainable organizations are, is really difficult um, when we started looking at this when we started the, the HLA for instance uh, we looked around for what support we could uh, we could have and like I said because I was running a, a for-profit technology company at the same time I was getting all this just enormous amounts of support from lots of places in terms of uh, to build medics academy and what I noticed was that that if you have like the, the same just technical support was just not there for not-for-profits and, and social enterprises charities and actually you made lots of mistakes that you didn't necessarily need to make um, and because healthcare has got this propensity of, of, of clinicians that want to start these social enterprises, not for profits, it kind of lent itself to bring that knowledge that we were, that I was, my, me and my team were gaining, and we were able to use that in the HLA to scale what we're doing. But what we wanted, what we noticed is that when our scholars were going out and creating their ideas, they were just, they just didn't have anywhere to go and support them with that. So um, that's where uh, Ali Jawad, who is uh, the, my, the, uh, a colleague of mine from the HLA and a, and a, a clinician, extremely talented uh, clinician who has done lots of uh, interesting initiatives in the kind of both not-for-profit and, and a commercial space. And I spent about 18 months, 14, uh, 14 to 18 months designing a program um, to support those professionals. Now we looked around around Europe. We couldn't see anything similar. Maybe we were we didn't spot it, but we couldn't see anything very similar in Europe. We noticed there were some things in the U.S. that were that kind of looked a bit like what we were trying to do, but not very many. Um, and there certainly weren't any in healthcare in Europe or in the UK. So that's where that's where we started. And we, we, we you know, we wanted to really help um, healthcare professionals to get those not for profit social enterprises into impact organisations, charities off the ground. We spent two, we'd spend two years really supporting them because we noticed with the HLA, it took us about two years to really get it kind of into a place where it where it was sustainable, where it didn't need that as much kind of extra help as it were and so our, it took us about two years and so we use that as a as a benchmark we assumed that you know two years is about right it's it's quite a significant commitment so we were really lucky in that medics academy um, has a, a charity uh, fund where we put we support uh, organizations that uh, want to get ideas off the ground or like charitable ideas so we we've done that in medics academy already in fact that's how we kind of got the hla off the ground and so we uh, took some of the funding from that opportunity and created the incubator program and from that incubator program we uh, we basically were able to support um, an initial pilot program which has been really successful um, and now we're going to take it on into a into a full rollout so i mean as you said hla ideas is for um, non-profit organizations within healthcare and we are going to take a, take on an organization and provide support to, the, to them for two years. Did you want to tell our listeners a little bit more about what support we actually provide? Sure. Um, so first of all, uh, Natalia has joined the team uh, over the last uh, four to six months and uh, she's like kind of really uh, 
turned uh, turned a lot of our uh, very fluffy kind of theories and stuff into some practical lessons so that's really good so we've got there's the team is me my, uh, myself uh, Ali Jawad and Natalia um, so we're there to support the initiatives as they're going through we run webinars with them we run workshops um, we also do a lot of one-to-one -one work with them so we will look at things like governance or we look at sustainability or we look at their marketing or their how to how to create membership uh, scenarios so lots of different elements often of um, of, uh, of an initiative and, and what it takes to make it sustainable and think about where their focus should be, their direction of travel, how to become um, relatively successful. So that's one of the, one of the key uh, metrics. One of the metrics we really want to see is that they're self-sustaining. The idea will perpetuate beyond um, the enthusiasm of the of the maybe the initial group of founders or uh, we know also with healthcare professionals they it's very hard to you know when you're working as a as a frontline clinician and so there are times when you have to drop out of what you're doing and you have to concentrate on your clinical career there are other times when you can come back um, burnout is very common and so it's really um, just making sure that all this work that often people put in is is poured into an organization that can become sustainable and can have an impact on the on the long term but for the long term benefit of the health system with within, within which it's found initially we're starting in the uk so where all of the initiatives are uk based but a lot of the initiatives which are uk based have a real international flair to them and so we hope that actually in time we'll be able to help healthcare professionals all around the world who have similar ideas that want to uh, take their ideas and, and create not-for-profit social impact organizations as a result. So as you said, we provide mentorship to the organizations on one-to-one -one basis and we also uh, do workshops and webinars with them every six weeks where we talk about a different topic uh, related to starting an organization. Uh, so this is what we offer so far, as well as a sense of community when, because they get to network with other organizations. And um, I am mindful how, of... How, Natalia, how have you been finding the, the, the last few months when, since you joined the organization? Because you've, uh, you've been kind of working with them and kind of creating that community. How does, how's, that, how's that been going? I think it, was, it, it has been absolutely an incredible journey. I mean, I only joined a few months ago, but I feel like I've learned already so much. It was amazing to hear about how the organizations have grown and how HLA ideas already have, has helped them with making them think more seriously about their ideas because a lot of the organizations we have on board so far are run actually by medical students so they came up with the idea and they started something with their mates and now and then it's grown and being part of HLA ideas focuses them to be a little bit more serious about their idea and take them take it forward to grow it into this sustainable organization so it's been absolutely amazing to hear about how educating them about different topics during our webinars or the one-to-one -one sessions that they've had with you or Ali, how helpful, you know, the feedback that they were getting from you um, has been to them. And it was really, really impressive watching them grow. And there's such, you know, we have such a great cohort on board right now. And these were really, really inspiring people. So I, I feel very lucky to be able to be part of HLA Ideas. And I am really excited for our next cohort, um, which we will be recruiting in a few months time. I was wondering whether you want to tell people watching us right now uh, what sort of things we're looking for when people are applying to HLA ideas. What is our ideal candidate? Sure, so, uh, so first of all it has to be a, a social enterprise or not-for-profit. So it has to be a charity uh, uh, or a, uh, in the UK we call them community interest companies, a CIC social enterprise, that has a not-for-profit not focus. Um, that's really important because the, the main reason is there's, there's a lot of uh, resources already out there like I say for for-profit companies, for startups etc. Um, we, want, we want them to be uh, led by healthcare professionals, so uh, the founding group has to be, not, it doesn't necessarily have to all have to be healthcare professionals, but certainly we'd prefer if the majority are healthcare professionals. Um, we'd like them to have a clear sense of what it is they're doing, they know what they're doing, and it is something that really should be a not-for-profit or a charity. It's not something that... Um, it's not something that, that 
basically should be do it being done by someone else or should be um you know that, that ha it's likely to flip over to being a for-profit company at some point because again that that is someone else's place that could be taken um so we want it to really have that that uh concept in in in, in mind we want it to really focus on achieving that of that that goal of of, of really driving forward a sustainable social impact organization. Um, apart from that, um, we take, you know, it's a really diverse mix of organizations that approach us. So um, if they're passionate, they're really keen, they have a, a real drive or mission that they want to solve, um, then that's usually a, a big, you know, plus. Um, we don't expect them you know it's not like a, a for-profit incubator we don't have to they don't have to have come up with the idealized product yet they don't have to show that kind of traction what they really need to show is traction of passion right so um, can they show that they are really passionate about what they do and are, are making that impact happen basically yeah, as you said, we don't need organizations to be quite far along the journey in order to apply. We uh, currently on our cohort, we have organizations on the, on the whole spectrum of starting. So we definitely are happy to receive applications from organizations that are just starting. But can you give some examples how they can show us during their application process that they are really driven, really motivated, even though they've just started? So, um, I mean, they don't have to have just started. They could have been going for a while, but they need to be relatively early. Just otherwise, it's it's not um, it's not necessarily uh, you know they 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 may not be suit they may not be ideal. But some of the organisations that we've worked with have you know relatively large teams. Uh, Melanin Medics was already a registered charity by the time they came to work with us, um, and they had an extensive team. They had a very good systems in place, etc. The British Caribbean Doctors and Dentists uh, group, they were, they had already, they had a committee of something like 20, 25 people who were behind them. We we worked with a group of three, the founder, the founders and the kind of senior officers. But the, um, but, you know, they can be quite, they can have quite an extensive network or establishment. What really matters is that the individuals concerned can commit to the, to the organization so not just to HLA ideas but to to their own organization for at least two years they they get that this is a long-term project it's not something they're just going to give up on in six months or in a year when they kind of move on to their next thing um, they have to be they have to care about the thing and they've got to be really looking at this as something they're going to spend the rest of their careers maybe on right so they're going to spend at least the next five ten years probably working on this because they really care that much about the about the area or the topic or the or the or, or the organization and so that's really important and they've got to show some degree of traction of what they're doing you know that they can get their ideas to work that they got an idea not in a financial sense they don't need to gener be generating money or anything but they've got to be able to show that they can either communicate their idea effectively they can encourage other people to work with them they can grow their idea and, and actually have an impact that way um, so those are the things that are really important because if uh, because if you're measuring impact you want to measure impact on metrics where it genuinely has impact on other human beings it has an impact on the health system it has an impact on uh, society itself and I think those are the those are the things that we really want to see so to anyone who's watching right now if this sounds like you and your organization please do apply we will link all the uh, the application form down below hopefully and um, fantastic I mean just just few more questions to anyone who is also thinking of starting their own organization I was wondering whether since we have you here you may want to give them some advice I know you know we've seen our organizations grow and change so much I was wondering whether you have any advice to people out there what are some sort of mis some what are the top mistakes that people make when starting a non-profit organization that um, you would want to advise them on so I would say just make sure that it's the same with anything really, that it's always, um, it's probably, you have a lot more control if you do it on your own, but it's a lot more sustainable often if you do it with other people that you know you can work with and that complement who you are and you complement them. So if you're trying to create something for the long term, you know usually it needs a team to work on it. Um, and so finding that mix of people and finding that group of people that you, you know, you really like working with, you care about, um, those are, that's really important. Um, I think make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, you know, really 
care about the subject matter. I mean, that's the most important thing of anything, whatever you're going to do. You have to care about and you have to passionately feel uh, that, that, um, that, you know, that, that drive to, to keep working on that. And so that's the other thing, you know, don't pick something that just for the sake of it or just because you feel you have to do something or you want to do it. Pick something that you genuinely care about. Um, and then finally, I think, um, you know, with a not-for-profit or a social enterprise, there isn't a rush, is the, is the reality. You know, you've got to make it sustainable and you don't have to think that you have to grow as fast as ever. You, that's not the aim, really. I think it's to show that you, you do quality, impactful, meaningful work and that work touches the lives of of people in a deep way you know you really make an impact in in a, in a small group of people or a, and an increasingly larger group of people in a really meaningful and deep way that's really important because if you can show that then usually you can grow something over the very long term something will grow out of what you've done and the work you've done um, so don't be in a rush to you know to to grow it to, to grow to a massive size because and, and this is where actually there's a massive contrast between um, when you know the whole startup ecosystem right now about growth at all costs and 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 the kind of work we do at HL Ideas which is more about having really deep connections and impact into the audience that you're trying to work with um, because if you can do that honestly speaking you will you will have a sustainable um, a sustainable organization for the future Thank you for that. I mean, you've raised so many good points here and as you're talking, I can just think of everything that we've been teaching our organizations that are working with us so far and all sort of the mistakes and like things that they've done in uh, in their journey that are sort of relating to everything you said. And you mentioned how it's important to have a good team you're working with. Yeah, and I would, I would reiterate that, you know, make sure you reach out to either myself, Natalia or to Ali um, and do talk to us about what you're doing and, and get involved because if you if you if this sounds like the thing that you've been looking for then I would absolutely encourage you to start talking to us uh, open a dialogue and 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 reach out thank you for telling us about HLA ideas and giving some advice to the organizations out there and to everyone who is interested please do check out the HLA websites and the HLA ideas application and um, we look forward to um, yes yeah, seeing your applications and hopefully we've inspired some people out there to join us yeah, and I would, I would reiterate that, you know, make sure you reach out to either myself, Natalia or to Ali um, and do talk to us about what you're doing and, and get involved because if, you, if, you, if this sounds like the thing that you've been looking for, then I would absolutely encourage you to start talking to us, uh, open a dialogue and, and, and reach out. Perfect. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye. Bye.